Hello everyone, this is Abhishek Gade and today we will be talking about pressure inlet velocity boundary condition in open foam. So the prerequisites to watch this video is please watch zero gradient boundary condition in CFD open foam as well as the fixed value boundary condition in CFD open foam. Uh, the, it's, it's available in our playlist and uh, it's needed because the zero gradient boundary condition will tell you about the discretization uh, and how, how it is derived and the fixed value is important because this boundary condition is derived from fixed value boundary condition. So it's very important to understand what actually is fixed value boundary condition. Okay, so let's start. We know pressure at a boundary. We know it already. So we have specified it. So the pressure is specified at a boundary. Now what to do with the velocity? What to do with the velocity at the same boundary? How to specify it? Should we specify it directly? So pressure is specified in the P file and velocity in the U file in the zero folder. So what to do now about the velocity at the boundary? Can we specify both pressure and velocity at the boundary? So let us understand the situation more clearly. So uh, yeah, there are two friends, velocity and pressure. The velocity is dependent on pressure and pressure is dependent on velocity. So velocity is calculated by knowing the pressure and pressure is calculated by knowing the velocity. This is how a solver works. But if, if I impose both the pressure as well as the velocity it is like giving a punch from both the sides to a solver like yeah i am the one i am the one i am correct i am correct solver says if pressure is correct this pressure is correct my velocity comes something different then why is this value value of velocity imposed on me so solver is a bit happy oh i got both velocities and pressure but uh, it's like over constrained, over constrained, too much of things are imposed on me. I don't require that much. I require only one thing, one pressure value and velocity. I'll, I'll calculate it by the internal field or something. So this is his situation. He looks happy, <laughs> but see his face shows he's in problem. He's in trouble. The equations which he is solving now that are in trouble. So yeah, because pressure and velocities are coupled with each other, both are friends but depend on each other. And that is why we need to specify, we can specify only one thing, pressure and velocity will be calculated by some other means. We need to look how. So what to do now? Uh, let's think what to do. We have the pressure values and by the at the first in the first iteration from the initial guest pressure value I'll calculate the velocities it means the simple algorithm or any algorithm does like that it will calculate the velocities from pressure then but how to do, calculate the velocity at the boundary okay so still to think so somebody will help me what who is that someone it's this ball it's this flux that flux is going to help to calculate the uh, velocity at that patch or the boundary and we'll look how how it is calculated soon so okay too much of things let's become formal now the pressure inlet velocity the pressure inlet velocity is where the velocity inlet boundary condition is applied to patches where the pressure is specified. Yes, we know this. And the inflow velocity is calculated from the flux. The velocity which, which, is, which is going to flow inside, the velocity of the flow inside the domain will, will, will be calculated from the flux with a direction normal to the patch faces. That is, this is very important with the direction normal to the patch faces. We'll understand this soon when we'll see the code. But for now, please keep in to mind that the direction is normal to the patch faces. Only that thing is considered. Now, this pressure inlet velocity boundary condition 
is a type of fixed value boundary condition so uh, yes and these are the discretization uh, where if we look uh, at the fixed value boundary condition video we'll get this the final values so after the discretization of laplacian term we'll get this equation and for the convective term it is this so one thing to notice phi p is the cell center value phi b is the face center the boundary face center value sf is the um, surface area vector and this is the flux now um, the thing to note here is phi is unknown but is it unknown right now no we have said right now that pressure inlet we just now told uh, pressure inlet velocity pressure inlet velocity means phi is nothing but right now it is velocity now velocity at the p is known by the previous iteration but do we know the velocity at the boundary no how to calculate it we will calculate it using flux so in this both the things in the calculation of both these terms the phi b or you can say the u b is unknown and that u b will be calculated by flux f yes we we denote the flux by f in all our videos so uh we'll uh, will somehow relate flux with this velocity and that is how um everything will be defined well so how to use this boundary condition we'll write the patch name on which we are applying the boundary patch and in this curly brackets we'll write type pressure inlet velocity phi 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 is nothing but the flux rho rho that is density you can change this phi and rho uh, if we are uh, if we want some other thing yeah, instead of this of uh, some experimenting with the solvers so but right now phi is flux so whatever inside the code it, if it says phi means it's flux and if it's rho it's density and value is uniform zero now what is this value it's the initial uh, boundary value because initially there is no flux at the zero uh, step so zero at the zeroth step we don't have any flux after first iteration we'll have a flux before that what to take the value at the boundary so we'll specify it here value uniform zero that means initially before before the thing was calculated from flux before the velocity was calculated from flux uh, this value was defined explicitly it was mentioned like okay keep it uniform zero okay so let's move on to the code very important part now yeah inside the pressure inlet velocity fv patch vector field dot c now uh, how this code interprets is it checks the dimension of flux according to the dimensions of flux it is going to give the value of velocity so it could be an incompressible solver where the flux is nothing but the velocity into area uh, i can say it as a volumetric flux or it could be a compressible solver where it is the flux is density multiplied by velocity multiplied by area one thing is to notice density is multiplied now in case of compressible so the flux would be considering density also so we need to divide it by density then if we want to calculate velocity so this is how the velocities are calculated divide the flux by area or by area or density in case of compressible area and density so flux divided by area will give velocity and flux divided by area into density will give velocity in case of compressible so why this n vector what is the role of this n vector and we can see here before going to n vector we can see here that f is nothing but phi p so phi p is nothing but the flux at the patch and n is okay we'll come to that s is nothing but magnitude s means magnitude of the area magnitude at that patch and okay so normal vector this is nothing but the normal vector why are we multiplying normal vector we know velocity is a vector quantity not a scalar quantity we need both the direction as well as the magnitude 
Now flux f is scalar, area is scalar, everything is scalar. What will make that velocity as a vector? It is the normal vector. Normal vector will also consider whether the boundary is curved or uh, of any different shape. So all of the patches would be pointing to different directions. All the normal vectors would be pointing to different directions. And that should be the velocity direction normal to that patch and that's, that is where we multiply normal vector both the sides so it's uh, that simple if or else if we use if uh, incompressible case use this formula and else if compressible case use this formula <laughs> that's how uh, the pressure inlet velocity boundary condition works so if you like this video uh, please subscribe my channel and do support me at PayPal. Thank you.